What is going on explorers? Welcome back to another video. In this episode we're going to take a look at this beautiful old little bluestone symmetrical cottage. And unfortunately it was demolished about a week ago. And the more unfortunate thing is it was actually listed as a heritage contributory item which means it was grouped with a lot of other houses on this street and as a collective those groupings of homes represent the preservation of the area as it was back in that time. Anyway, I'm going to show you through this cottage to see what's left. And as I go, I'm going to add some history. Thank you again to Julianne Turner who helped me dig up the uh, history on this one. Anyway, let's get into it. I hope you enjoy. All right, what is happening, explorers? Another bluestone cottage, guys, built around 1890. But if I've dug up some more inf information since then, you would have probably seen it at the start, along with the uh, front. Alright, check it out. The old trough. Now this is obviously uh, an add-on with this bathroom. Lots and lots of dust. And yes, unfortunately this one's been listed for a demolition. And the power is no longer attached to the house, so it's not looking good for this one. Whoa. All right, this is the uh, kitchen. Oh, check it out. This is old. Really, really bad salt damp there. And you're cracking as well. Schmackos. So the previous owner had a dog. One tap.
Check out these old cabinets. What era do you think they're from, guys? 50s? 60s? 70s at latest. Absolute latest. Whoa, there must be a there must be a gate or a shed door blowing shut out there. It's just kitchen stuff there. Oh still still got all the kitchen utensils on that one. Thirtieth of September, eighty-nine. Hmm. Now, even this little kitchen, even though it's very old, this may have been an original, um, an add-on to the original part too, because there's one of the six over six windows. which originally would have looked out to the open porch. I'm really, really hoping this door's open. You can tell where the furniture was. Oh, there is a pair of. Looks like elderly ladies' glasses, maybe reading glasses. So yeah, this section would be your symmetrical four-room cottage. Here, there, there, and here. Wow, well, there is a lot of um, a lot of salt damp. coming through everywhere there. You can probably see why this one's getting demolished. Yeah, there's leaks in the roof everywhere too. See straight out to the sky there. These old um, curtains, very 70s, 60s.
turn this light off. Yeah, straight out there. Is a neighbour's house. And their car park the car is parked right in the driveway. And I could just hear a woman's heels walking up the up the driveway then. That's why I kind of stepped stepped out here again. Alright. Big mirror there. Classic old bake light switches. Got some old furniture left by the look. So I'm pretty certain and at least an elderly lady lived here last. Look at this old seat. There's an old tie down there. So probably a, a husband or wife lived here for a long, long time. Well, that is that is a single bed, so. Maybe Mrs. Outlasted Mister. Although we haven't been in that other room yet, so. Okay, so right about now is probably a good time to take a look at the history of this place. And I can say this home has been in the same family name for 73 years. And for those 73 years, it's been in the Stevens name. So we will take a look back at John Stevens right here, born 1889 in Adelaide and married in 1907. And he was married to Esther May Nolder, who obviously became Esther May Stevens. And as we scroll down, you can see they had seven children and only Frederick has a birth date and death recorded next to his name but we want, to, we want to keep an eye on Albert down here so next we jump over to the Sands and McDougall street directories and the first time Stevens appears at the address is in 1942 as we go down to 157 Coglin Street you can see John Stevens is listed here now this is the electoral rolls of 1943 the year after and you can see both Esther May of 157 Coughlin Street, home duties, female and husband John are both listed at the address in 1943. Alright, we move on to a land title now and this is when it was transferred from Julia Elizabeth Eileen Miller to Esther May Stevens and that was transferred in 1947. Then we've got the public trustee transmission application. Now this is a record of when Esther May died, the 30th of October 1949. And as you can see down here, the transfer was to Albert Stevens. And that was in 1950. So Albert had this property from 1950 in his name, but it looks like he probably was living there with them beforehand. 
All right, jump to 1973, and this is the last recorded street directories from Sands and McDougall. And we go to Coglin Street here. And we move up to 157. And there you go, A. Stevens, RL Emp, which could stand for Rail Line Employee. There's abbreviations of the uh, occupations next to the names in these directories. And there is another document that Julianne was able to research from, and it shows that Albert transferred the home in March of this year to another Stevens. It's unclear whether it is Albert's children, as I can't find any records of Albert marrying or having any children. But as I mentioned earlier, the home has been demolished now and a new development of another dwelling is going up in its place. So a pretty amazing family history with this home. And if I had to estimate Albert's age, I would put him somewhere in his mid to late 80s. And that's purely from looking at the list of his brothers and sisters as the list usually goes from eldest to youngest. All right, let's continue with the explore and take a look at the rest of the house. Let's continue. Probably nothing in these, but you never know. Will it be lucky last? No, nothing. Some Christmas present wrapping paper there. Okay. I want to get a shot of that with no, no light on it. We've got my shadow there, unfortunately. Oh yes, the old fireplace. The power box is gone. Another dresser. Two wardrobes. That must have been the mirror in the in that other room. Or the missing mirror for that. There's the front street out there. Classic old fireplace. The other one was covered up in the other room. Shoehorn. Probably the seat, the seat, a little stool for the dresser. Yeah, these front rooms are definitely in better shape than the um, back ones. Oh, 
Uh, here's our little bobby pin. May as well check them. You guys might tell me off if I don't. No luck. Okay. Yeah, it's a um, definitely a, a more a simple worker's cottage. This one, there's no no archway or ceiling roses. And the ceilings are the ceilings are actually quite low and they're they're original too. Okay, we'll go and check um the outhouse. I don't think there was a toilet there. No. So it looks like they used that outhouse right up to the end. Just bits and pieces here. Cobwebs. Enamel, paint strippers, all that sort of stuff. Blokey stuff. Oh, there's, a, there's water on the floor everywhere. the old light. Yeah, this is the original outhouse for sure. The old door with the latch. Classic. Here's the back shed. I think that's the door that's been blowing shut. And as I mentioned in the intro, this home was listed as a heritage item, a contributory item. Now you're probably wondering how a heritage item can be demolished. And in a lot of instances, these homes uh, fall into such a state of disrepair that the owners can argue that it's too costly to rehabilitate. And then they get an approval from the council to demolish, which seems to be the case here. But I have seen worse, in worse condition. And for all you renovation gurus that may be watching, you, you tell me if this place is too far gone. It seems to be only these rear rooms that are really in trouble. So many memories and so many stories to tell these old places. Love finding them and exploring them. And just being in them, picking up all the uh, vibes of the past, if at all possible. Okay, on to the next one to see what I can find. And with that said, I'll see you there, guys, in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.